This is the plaintiff, Carmen Vergara. She says she met the defendant at her church and they became close friends. She ended up laying out and loaning money to him to attend a funeral in North Carolina. And she's having one heck of a time getting him to pay her back. As it turns out, he's not a friend at all. She's owed $1,159.79, and that's why she's suing here today. This is the defendant, Reginald Edwards. He says the plaintiff was the one who voluntarily offered to help him to attend a funeral. And she voluntarily paid for it. He never asked to borrow any money. And they certainly never had a conversation about him paying her back. She took on the male role in the relationship. And since she was offering to pay for everything, who's he to say no? Oh, her now after the fact? No way. He's accused of taking advantage of a woman's kindness. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff loaned money to her friend, the defendant, to go to a funeral in North Carolina uh, and didn't get the money back. But the defendant says it was a gift. It's the case of funeral stiff. Okay, Carmen Vergara, you are suing Reginald Edwards for $1,159.79 that you say he owes you for all this money that you outlaid on two different trips. Tell me what happened. Well, actually... Um, we, we, uh, I'm, I was a member at the Church of uh, Broken Pieces back where we resided at uh, 15 years ago. I know him for 15 years. And then recently we started uh, communicating on Facebook and um, eventually I heard he has cancer. He was a cancer survivor. So that touched my heart and I just wanted to invite him out. So I took him out to Sight and Sounds to um, see a show out there and to eat, to wear lobster and so on. But at, uh, when we was driving back, um, he learned that his aunt had passed away and then his cousin had passed away back to back, you know, oh eventually during those, that week. And I felt, you know, uh, extremely sad and uh, empathy for him. And I offered, I said, I have a credit card that is free of interest that I just uh, received for $1,500 that I could, you know, go and go with you and pay for the, for, you know, for the um, trip, you know, help you pay for the trip and everything. He said, well, I don't have no money until I get, um, I could pay you something. He said something back when I get my check on the 3rd of March. And I said, that's fine. And we went, um, first of all, his how, cousin, how much was he supposed to pay you back? He didn't say, he said something. No, nobody had a plan? No. He okay. just said something. Well, what do you think something was going to be? I didn't Two dollars and forty cents. Like, yeah. how do you, I didn't know. Like, there's I didn't no. Agree on uh, hold on one second. There's no agreement between you guys about how much he's going to pay. If you're going to pay anything, if he's going to pay part of it, like nothing. No, no discussion. No, he just said he's going to give me something towards okay. the trip. That's all he said. All right. And um, actually, his we were supposed to stay at his cousin, one of his cousins' house out there in North Carolina. And the, his cousin, at the last minute, she uh, she said there was no room for us. So then I had to rent a, a, a room for two nights with two beds. So that cost me additional money that I wasn't And you two were to. not romantic, right? No, not at the moment. No, well, not at the moment. Was there some other moment you were romantic? Uh, well, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. I didn't realize it, it, that. It, it was uh, start, <clears throat> something was start, starting to flow there. However, I backed up right away when I learned what kind of man he is. You know, I got to pay for what gas. Why? did you learn? I have to pay for gas. I have to pay for food. I have to pay for everything, toes, food, everything. So why should I have a man like that? And my mother didn't raise me like that. Okay. You know, a man should, you know, stand up and be a man. Okay. And pay. Or at and least open the door stand for up, be a man and pay half of it. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Amen. That's, Some, that's what all I'm right. Yes. So, so according to you, he's supposed to pay you when you get uh, when he gets his check, yes. and that was going to be on March third. Yes. Because this was February. He said. Give and me did March third come and go? Yes, it came and go. Um, actually, and he did not pay anything. No, and nothing at all. Um, he said he had two months of rent that he had to pay plus oil that he could not give me no money at all. All right, and then you asked him to take you to Massachusetts. Yes, I was hoping he he could help me, like I helped him. He could at least help take me because I go try to go every year to see my uncle that's there okay. at the nursing home, and he uh, he was the 81st birthday. I tried to go there like April 9th every year, and I, w um, I was hoping he'd take me there. He said yes, he would take me. Okay. However, um, one time I was pump he was pumping gas. Uh, that I paid for, of course. And um, he noticed that one tire was messed up in the back. He said, I hope he makes it to, to, Mass you know, to Massachusetts like that. He made that comment. And I said, well, if you're going to take me to Massachusetts, I will buy the tires, you know. 
So I, buy, I bought them two tires. Was supposed for the to pay you back for the tires? No, not at no, all. The if, tires were. If right. he takes me if to Massachusetts, to Massachusetts that was your gift. Me, no. Wow, but because, you're already in the hole for yes. all the other stuff. So yeah. well, I wasn't thinking he wasn't not going to pay me at all because the 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 month went so quickly. I figured yeah. he's gonna. I was going to receive something from him, but okay. eventually he figured he's not going to give me anything at all. So that what happened? Um, it's time to go to Massachusetts. <clears throat> yes, and then um, uh, he told me he specifically told me that at ten o'clock I need to be ready. Ten so, o'clock in the morning. In the morning. Okay. And, you know, I, sometimes I can't sleep at night. Okay, so were you ready at 10? No, I wasn't okay. ready. At 8 o'clock, I texted him. I said, I couldn't, have, I couldn't get no sleep. I need to get some sleep, you know, and I, I, I need my Emmetrix. I need to get some sleep. And then he said, if you're not ready by 11 o'clock, we were texting back and forth. He said, well, I can't drive with the, uh, I fall asleep. I can't drive with traffic. Uh, going to New York, Connecticut, I have a... Uh, um, Let me see the text. Uh, oh, not text, ma'am, uh, voicemail. Oh, voicemail, okay. So I'll see. The, I'll hear those in a second. Go ahead. Yes, that he, uh, oh, I'm not going, you know, I'm a, my, my life is at risk. I might fall asleep on the road. And, you know, it's, I'm not going to be stuck going through New York and Connecticut and driving all that through traffic and all that excuses. He has sent me a, face, a Facebook text that he said, um, I got news for you. And he didn't tell me what was the news right before the trip. <laughs> so I guess that was it. Where that he wasn't going to take was? me. That he because, take because you're explaining to me that there was a plan to leave at 10 and that you were the one who was breaking the plan to leave at 10. Yes. So. But, but originally, before, he sent me on Facebook that he, that he had news for me. And then he called me before that and we spoke. And he said, what am I supposed to do when I'm, when I'm out there? And I'm like, uh, do the same thing I did in North Carolina. Stay in the room in the hotel and watch TV or do something, you know, on tablet or something, you know. So, you know, in other words, putting excuses, you know? And then that, I guess that was the news that he had for me because right. he gave me, like, So okay. when he tells you, he, how do you find out he's not going to take you to, did you talk in person or but through the messages? It, it was t text messages. And <laughs> What's your side of the story? Face. Yeah, I don't I never in, asked uh, the plaintiff about any money to go to North Carolina. She, yeah, but why would she have to pay? Why wouldn't you pay? It was your relatives that you were well, going down I, I there to? I had money, Your Honor. Then but why she, didn't you pay? I, I paid some of my, my way. Why did she? She's she <laughs> the one who offered to go and pay and get a room, Your why, Honor. But uh, well, here's what I don't understand. Why do you allow it? Why well, allow it? Because she offered it. Okay, so I asked you a few minutes ago about who takes advantage of who, landlords or tenants, right? Now, in the money department, who takes advantage of who more? Men or women? What do you think? Uh, I think woman. Why do you say? Because you're a man? Why? Yeah, I'm a gentleman. Yeah. Oh, a gentleman. Oh, a gentleman. Okay, okay. Who takes advantage of who more? What do you think? I think women do. How so? Just because they are the ones that... Manipulate? Manipulate. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. And then know that the gentleman will take care of the bill or whatever it is. Okay, what do you say? Women. Really? Women. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're all agreeing on this. Oh, the whole group oh you're so them. devious, you guys. <laughs> going inside the courtroom. According to her, you told her you were going to give her some money on March 3rd. True or not true? That's not true, Your Honor. Because you were never going to give her any money ever? Uh, only I was asked by my pastor to sell the things and start giving her something. And Did you listen to your pastor? No, I didn't, Your Honor. No, okay. Because I didn't think I was obligated to, to <laughs> do the to do that. All right, so let's talk about Massachusetts. So then there's a plan. She wants to go in April, and you agree that you're going to take her in April to Massachusetts so that she can visit her uncle, who's in a nursing home and turning 81. And you say yes, and then what happens that day? Well, she called me and, and said that she didn't sleep and that she needed a little more time to, you know, get herself together. And I said, and I made a statement that if she would have went to bed, you know, you could have, we could have went. And then later on, we bickering back and forth with texts that I have on, I have let my texts. Let me text, see the texts. And let me hear the messages. I'm calling you, trying to find out if you're still going. I'm not going in late in the afternoon, through that, all that traffic. Calls that I made to you today is being recorded. <laughs> And I can prove to anyone in court that I did not breach my contract with you. The tires you gave me was a gift from your heart. And you're trying to bully me into taking you because of the tires. But I 
I refuse to be okay, Muslim. Okay, I've heard enough. You know? I've read through all the texting back and forth. It doesn't seem very Christian to me, neither one of you. In fact, that's what you keep accusing each other of, not being very Christian, while you're, I guess, not mm -hmm. being very Christian. I don't know. <laughs> um, even your pastor told you you should be giving her something. And um, you walk in here and you say, I owe her nothing. I don't believe that it's accurate that you were never supposed to pay something. I think it's reckless to not know what something is. Um, because then how do you figure what you're going to be asking for here today? The amounts you're asking for, those are the total amounts. And so now all of a sudden he's paying 100%. So your deal is better now that you sue him than it was when you struck it that night. Um, that's not going to happen. Then this whole deal with Massachusetts, if you're supposed to leave at a certain time and you didn't, he's arguing, well, she breached, I didn't. I think you're right, he was itching to not go because he didn't want to go. Um, but I also believe that changing you know, everything on him is not like, you're not guiltless in the Massachusetts trip not going through either. Uh, of course, you know, a couple of hours, what's the big deal when you're going to Massachusetts? I don't, I don't get it. So I'm gonna do a little rough justice here and try to figure out a figure that I think is appropriate. So I am ordering the defendant to pay the plaintiff for half of all the expenses. $580 verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you. Good luck. God bless you. Have a good day. You too. All right, both sides. And so he'll be paying half. Step on out here, 50-50. How does that, how does that go down with you? That don't go uh, sit well with me because the plaintiff offered the, the, the things that she gave me because of our commitment to each other and our friendship. And I think that if I was in the same position and I was able to treat her, I would. You don't offer somebody a gift and then, you, you know, you look for something back in return. Are you two still seeing each other around? Um, no, I, I'm trying to stay away from you her. You see her at the church? She, she, we don't go to the same church. Anymore? All right. Okay, head, head around the corner this way. All right, step on in here. And All right, you didn't get everything you sued for, but it, it gets split down the middle. How about that? That's fine. I'm grateful. I thank God. I just, you know, um, don't trust man, you know, tr trust and believe in the Lord that he never fails, you know. He, this guy, he proved what he is, you know, he's just not worth anything, not worth no one's time. He's not a Christian, that's for sure. He's not showing his Christianity. Harvey? You know, judges in small claims court do rough justice, but when you get into higher amounts with bigger courts, uh, you can't have loosey-goosey agreements. You'll end up with nothing. 